What's up guys, this is MA Fish Guy. Uh, today's video is going to be on how to breed the Bumblebee Gobi. Uh, this is a viewer request by Brother Dave. Uh, I have personally never bred this fish, uh, never really given the chance to try. Uh, I've had a couple in an aquarium, uh, so I had to get a hold of a couple of my buddies to actually see how to breed these guys. Um, but it is quite easy from what they're saying. You only need like a 10 gallon tank. Uh, you get roughly about 12 bumblebee gobies, um, young ones, and kind of let them pair off. Uh, with these guys, you do want to add a little bit of salt to the water. Uh, they're saying anywhere's usually about a tablespoon uh, per gallon to two gallon is the ideal, uh, but you want to keep it steady. Uh, you don't want it to fluctuate too much. Uh, a lot of people out there say that uh, one tablespoon per usually about gallon, gallon and a half actually helps induce the breeding. Um, but for an ideal setup, you want a bunch of uh, shells, empty shells, like escargot shells or uh, any kind of big hollow shells or a lot of cave-like um, situations in the tank. Um, what this is going to do is actually they breed and lay the eggs inside of the cave. Uh, so with these guys, the males will actually turn a bright goldish yellow. Uh, they'll actually almost lose all those stripes that they have on them. And the females will get very rounded and those dark lines will get even more darker. Um, but what's going to happen with these guys is it's usually pretty quick that they breed. Um, the male actually guards the eggs until they hatch. Uh, and what happens is the female swims into the cave with the male. Uh, the male fertilizes a batch of eggs and then she swims back out. The female really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the nest. Uh, it's more the male. The male will actually chase away any intruders being as small as they are. Uh, they'll keep chasing them. Uh, so that's a good thing when it comes to that, but a bad thing if you have other fish in the tank. Um, for a rearing tank, uh, for the babies once they hatch, you do want to remove the parents. Uh, you can either keep them in that 10 gallon, uh, move them to another 10 gallon, and do vinegar eels uh, for a food or any other small microorganism that you can get. Uh, usually within a week, uh, they're eating the baby brine shrimp, uh, so that's a good thing. It's a little easier to get a hold of. Uh, and then they usually develop those stripes. Uh, from what everyone's saying, usually within like two, three weeks. Uh, and within three months, they're pretty much a spitting replica of their parents. Uh, so, I mean, like I said, they can be easy. Uh, trying to get your hand on 12 bumblebee gobies, I know around this area, uh, good luck. Uh, you're not going to find more than three or four in a tank. Uh, and usually about two to three dollars. So if you want to spend forty bucks on uh, Bumble the Gobies uh, to give it a shot, then go for it. Um, but to actually help entice these guys into breeding, you do want to do frozen or live food. Uh, if you want to do a prepared food like flake food and stuff like that, it's just not going to get them into the mood to breed. Uh, and doing water changes, um, they're saying they did you know fifty to seventy five percent every like two days, but with that it's really important to keep that salinity up same thing with the babies uh, you want to keep the salinity at around two teaspoons per gallon uh, maybe a little bit less um, but whatever you decide to put them at you definitely want to keep them at uh, just because if you fluctuate they're all going to perish uh, these guys can't adapt to the salt water and conditions as well as the parents can um, and making sure to siphon off any of the uneaten food that's not eaten by these guys uh, so definitely keep an eye on that salinity. Uh, you can get a you know a salinity meter uh, that actually attaches right into the aquarium, which kind of helps you read and helps fluctuate in almost live time, as you could call it, um, and helps you kind of keep that salinity under control. And remember, with evaporation, evap when water evaporates, it doesn't take the salt with it. Uh, so you only want to add fresh water back into the tank. Uh, if you keep adding salinity, you're just going to, you know, spike up the levels and end up killing all the fish in there. Um, so even with saltwater people, if you're looking to do a saltwater tank or beginning a saltwater tank, um, remember, salt doesn't evaporate. A lot of people learn that the hard way, unfortunately, and they keep putting salt. What the recommended dosage, which you're doing that part right, but just the evaporation rate, like I said, doesn't take the salt. So they end up oversalting the fish and killing them. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, uh, put them below in the comments section. Visit my website, mafishguy.blogspot.com. Uh, check out my store. I'll post a link below. And subscribe to my channel. Thanks.